Hey guys, this is Tina again with Rehatch Designs, and I'm here for our second part of affordable uh, junk journals. And we are going to do something with the clean out your closet stuff that we had. So I am going to make a Valentine's journal because I found this um, blouse that I had, and we're gonna we're gonna work with that. And I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, a very affordable way okay first of all what I'm going to use is excuse me this blouse that I found in my closet and it has some nice trim on it and I'm going to be using that to cover the journal with but first this is what we're going to do we're going to take a plain old Manila file folder and we're going to use that as our base to um, attach our material to and this will be what our cover what we're using for our cover so this is what we're going to do first is we're going to take our excuse me here our journal cover here And the way this works is pretty easy, but you're going to have to trim off a little bit. And I don't even measure this part because it really, it just needs to be around an inch. You just don't want to take much more than that because you want to be able to have enough room. And this is just a plain old uh, normal size. You could use a legal one because you just would cut it down more, but this size would work. So just go, you know, cut off this this part right over here. I don't really like this for a trimmer, but I, it has a school board on it too, so it makes it easier not to have to go back and forth. Anyway, there you go. So you're going to cut that piece off, and then you're going to take what's left over after you've cut that piece off, and you're going to trim it to seven and a quarter from this length to that length. So we're going to do that. And let's see here, seven and a quarter is about right there. Like I said, not my favorite trimmer, but this way I have everything all in one when I'm trying to show you guys how to do this. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and do your height of your journal and that's going to be eight and three quarters so do that so there we go that is eight and three quarters by seven and a quarter now our journal is not going to end up being uh, seven and a quarter wide because we're going to have a spine on here and we're going to use our file folder to do that for us okay so what you do and this is the reason I have my scoreboard out is you want to take your um, your file folder and you want to score it exactly at three quarters let me make sure yeah you want this to be at three quarters of an inch right there so I'm sorry that should be one and three is that one and a half let me measure that again hold on three quarters yeah that's right it should be three quarters I did it right uh -huh. okay I have to do it this way okay so this should be at three quarters of an inch and actually most file folders let me get that right on the one most file folders are going to have I don't like using this one because I can't see it real well but most file folders already have a score line there 
but the problem is usually is that they don't have one on the other side so we can just use that but it's going to actually just hit the same spot that the other one is on the other side so anyway so you're going to score it at three quarters of an inch and like i said you probably already had that on the other side what that's going to do is that is going to give you a one and a half inch spine for your journal and that makes the natural fold of your file folder just right in the middle and you'll see why that's kind of important later because this is going to be kind of a flexible spine when you're done so you're going to do cut off about an inch get the end pieces off you're going to do seven and a quarter this way eight and three quarters this way and then you're going to score at three quarters right here and what that will do is that will give you a one and a half inch spine where your normal natural fold is is the middle of your spine so that's the first thing you're going to do okay the next thing and this is totally your preference you don't have to do this but this is how i'm doing this journal let me get this out of the way got that over here what i did is i took my file folder after i cut it all down and i put some gesso on it which if we're doing this affordable you can easily use this is white acrylic paint from the dollar store you can buy actually it's probably smarter to buy it from uh, walmart because i think it's a bigger bottle anyway just get white paint flat paint and you can use that and it works just as well but i had the gesso so i used it and let it dry then after you do that i wanted to put a light pale pink on here because you're going to be able to see through that lace fabric so i went ahead and just did um, some light pink all over the whole thing uh, you can use any paint that you want i happen to use this paint it's 2.99 i think i got it at tuesday morning and I'll just it goes on pretty easy I mean I like it uh, it's very smooth I mean I think y'all know how to paint so anyway it went on pretty smooth and you just want to put it on there it does not need to be um, you know perfect here I need to put something under this so go ahead and do that anyway it doesn't have to be perfect because this is actually just supposed to look kind of you know loose you can go all different ways it doesn't matter you're just trying to basically put some color on this because you're going to be able and you actually could leave it white underneath there you don't have to put a color i just thought i was going to do the light pink that's just what i'm doing but you could leave it white you, you know you could you could skip the part of the white paint you know i just did it because i know that it'll help grab this paint and use less of your other paint and that type of thing but you could skip that part altogether. you could put actually put another you know material under it if you wanted to if you had some you know material that you'd like to glue down first you could do that but this is what i'm doing for this one okay so then after you do that what you're going to want to do and this is how i did it again you don't have to do it this way you could leave it just like that but i took a little bit of this gold and this has kind of a metallic sheen to it and that's kind of why i use these but you don't have to use that you can use anything you have and if you don't have you know light pink paint you could just get yourself take your white paint put a couple drops of red paint in there and you're good to go anyway i just took a little of this gold paint and i think i even did it while it was wet but we can still work with it and i just put you know a few spots here and there all over it 
and kind of blended it in in certain places and just did that all over you know I took my where did my pink brush go pink brush and went back over it you know and blended it in I didn't put a ton of it on there but I kind of wanted just just some variation in color underneath there so that's just kind of what I did all over that up anyway so that's what you're going to do all over get it to the point that you like it and like I said you can skip that part completely and just keep the white underneath it or whatever color you want or you could actually just put uh, patterned paper on there if you want to do that that's not what I'm doing for this one but that may be what you want to do okay so I have one that I've already done so this is kind of what it ended up looking like for me. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and reinforce the spine. And I'm going to do it on the inside. Now, you can use um, Tyvek to reinforce it. And I've got this piece, and that's probably what I'm going to use. And I think I talked about in my other series of uh, junk journaling, you can get this. This is um, what mail is often said. In. It's, it's a paper material, but it's I, it has like a nylon or something in it, and it's pretty much indestructible. But you know what a good alternative is? Duct tape. And this is just white duct tape. And... This is actually not a bad thing to use either because when you use it, it just sticks right down. You just put it right down where you would normally put the tie back. And so um, you can use that also. And, and a lot of people, that's, that's mainly what they use. So, I mean, it's pretty indestructible too, um, maybe even more so. So that's an alternative to that if you don't want to mess with that. You could also put a piece of material down here. But I already had this in these strips that I used in our other junk journal we made. So I'm just going to use that. Now, I'm going to use the tacky glue. I got this for a dollar, you know, at the dollar store. And it works great. I also use a lot the 3-in-1 Beacon. And it is a more expensive glue to do your lace, etc. But it dries a lot faster. And it grabs quicker. Um, I like using that, but you certainly don't have to spend your money on that. I have used the um, Arlene's Clear Gel Tacky Glue, and it works really well. Again, it doesn't dry nearly as fast. And I think this is like $1.99 at Walmart. So, I mean, you can decide what you want to do. I think on this one I'm going to go ahead and use this just for our sake because it'll dry faster. That way we can get to the next step. But you could certainly use your tacky glue, whatever you want to use. And the reason I'm not putting it on the back, and you could do it on both. I, I don't think it's necessary but because we're going to have material and that also reinforces it. But... The reason I'm not doing that is because I don't want this to show through because we're going to be able to see our now our the middle is here's one line and here's the other line so we kind of want to get it it doesn't have to be exactly centered but you're trying to get it to where you have it's reinforced through the back there's my bone folder I had multiple ones you think I could find one Anyway, so then you do that, and obviously I don't have a piece long enough, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to overlap it a little bit for strength. I'll just do that right there. And I bought a package of this uh, quite a long time ago off of Amazon. So, and I've made quite a few journals with it, and it's lasted a long time. But if you don't want to do that, like I said, 
and it doesn't have to be white duct tape it could be any color because nobody's going to see it so you could use that most people have some duct tape lying around and you, you can get it pretty inexpensively it doesn't have to be any kind of name brand anyway so that goes down and like I said you could easily use the tacky glue it just takes longer to dry okay so the next step is the outside of our journal is going to be this material and so that is going to be on there at some point you can see why I wanted the color through there but before I do that I want to put something on the inside now you could put material here if you wanted to and I'm doing some other journals with that same material and I may do that later but on this one what I did is I got some pattern paper and I think I bought this probably about a year ago and this is a Prima paper Tales of You and Me and I used my coupon and I went through here and I looked at there's so many pretty papers in here and I had a hard time with it I almost picked that one but I didn't um, anyway what I decided to do is I'm going to use this paper right here and what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to cut this in half because I don't need but Let's see how many inches. Let's see what I'm going to do. Oop, wrong way. I am going to do that. Yeah, we only need about six inches. And I'm going to put that on there. And then I'm going to cover this with something else down the middle. To kind of help reinforce it so let me just take this I was going to go all the way to the end but I didn't want to have it overlap and I didn't want to have a seam so I'm just going to do that because if you do something and it's in the middle and it'll inevitably end up popping up so you're actually better off just covering it so I'm going to do it that way so anyway I'm going to take my paper cutter and I'm going to go six inches. And partly the reason I'm doing that too is I, you know, I don't have to use two pieces of paper. So that saves us money. And it saves our pretty paper. So we'll do that. Okay, so that's the two pieces that we need. Except, wait, we have to do our height here. I forgot about that. Okay, we've got to do... So just a smidge over eight and a half. So we'll do a smidge. I don't ever worry if it's perfect later because I usually put lace on the ends. So if it's if it doesn't line up, if there's a little bit, if it doesn't line up perfect, usually that helps you out. So I'm going to do it. Did we decide it was eight and a smidge, huh? I don't know. Maybe I should get a little bit more exact. I don't know. A little under nine. I thought this one was a little, must be different than the other one that I cut. Okay. So we will do that about right there and just see how it looks. All right, so. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. So I'm going to do another one like that. Oop, I didn't cut it all the way, did I? Alright. So that's two pieces that we need. 
And I'm going to take that. And then again, you could very easily use your tacky glue for this. I'm going to use this for the only reason is that it will dry quick enough so that we can get on to the next part. But if it were just me doing this, then I would probably just use the tacky glue. And I'd use it on this and on the cover just because it works fine and it's a lot less expensive. And I kind of reserve my 3-in-1 glue for a lot of my lace and things like that because it is more expensive. And... If I use it for everything, you know, I'm going to go through it pretty, and it's not necessary really, but it does work really, really good. This or fabric tack or, it just dries quickly and it, and it grabs really well. So that's why it works really well on your fabrics and things like that. I actually like the tacky glue kind of a little bit better on my cover because I can have a little bit more time to work with it. So, I mean, that's kind of my preference, but you know, you want to make sure you spread it around. And like, I got this little spreader at um, the dollar store, and I think it, what did, I think it was for putting makeup masks on or something, which I don't use it for, but I love it because it really spreads your glue around, doesn't get your fingers all messed up. So anyway, I'm gonna do that. Sorry about my neighbor's dog. So we're going to just do that. And like I said, even if it doesn't cover all the way, eventually I'm going to put lace on there. I'm going to move that back just a tiny bit over here. I have, you have a little bit of time with this glue, but not nearly as much as you do the tacky glue too. So if you're new, that's another reason to use tacky glue. So, I'm going to do that. Then, do my other side. I'm going to do that all the way. Make sure you spread it around. Let's see, here we go. And get it all the way to the ends. That's the most important thing is getting it to the ends. And you want to make sure you spread it because if you don't, you could get bubbles in there. Like I said, this stuff does dry pretty quick. So you have a little bit of time, but you want to make sure you get it down. So and I always kind of line it up, at, try and line them up at the corner. And then that helps you get it down. And then this needs to come up just a tiny bit. Like I said, for me, it doesn't have to be perfect because I always, pretty much always, put lace in there. So, and then I ink the edges and stuff like that. So that also helps with the imperfections too, is if when you ink it, which I think that's why probably, not just the look, I think that's part of the reason that people do that in junk journaling because they're not aiming for perfection. Okay, so anyway, and let's see if we're going to have enough. I just want to make sure that this isn't right on the fold line. Because what happens then is it will pop off. So that one is going to be right here. And then that one is going to be. And you can see your lines from the outside. This one needs to come right here. So let me do that. Those are, those are your score lines that you did earlier. So that's a line and that's a line. I just did that. Didn't need to be in there. Let me go the other way. So that's your score line. Let me do that. And that's your score line. Okay. So that's where that is. All right. So then, you've got this, these gaps right here. I don't know, let me see if I want to do that. I could put that in there, 
but I actually would like something a little bit more flexible. So what I think I'm going to do, hang on just a minute, I'm going to go get something. I have, let me see which one. I want wide enough. I think this one. This one, this one, this one. Okay. You know what? That's probably not going to be wide enough. Not going to be wide enough. Hang on a minute. I'm going to go find something. Perfect. I got this lace at Walmart and I'm gonna put it right there. See that's perfect because you'll you'll see through it a little bit, but it'll be it'll look nice on the inside. So I'm gonna do that. Now, like I said, you don't have to do that. You could put a piece of paper. You could put just some white fabric. You could put whatever, you know, whatever it is you want to do. I am not going to. I think I'm going to glue it down and then cut it. Okay. Now, this I would normally go ahead and use the 3 in 1 glue because I like it a little bit better. Kind of get an idea where that's going to be for fabric and things like that and like I said I would invest in that but I would you know use it a lot more sparingly I'm only using it on this stuff just for the fact that it dries really quick and then that we can go on to the next step but this part I would probably use it for this pretty much on any type of material this is what I will use okay and again, I'll use my little spreading tool. There we go. So I hope all of you are having a great day. <clears throat> I finished taking my Christmas decorations down and I'm pretty excited about that because it was pretty daunting because I do do a lot of decorating which I have decided after doing all that that um, I'm not going to do that much anymore. It's just a lot of work. A lot, a lot of work. Okay, so that is going to be in the middle. And I'll probably put lace on the outside too, but first I'm going to put the fabric. Okay, so that's in there. And then I would go ahead and cut that. And a lot of the reason I don't cut my lace and stuff until after I get it on is I always inevitably cut it wrong. And then this way, I just wait till it's on there and then I cut it. Let me cut my shirt in a minute. Okay. There we go. So I do that. And I always usually put a little of this on the ends to keep it from fraying. And it works really well. And it's clear so you can't see it. So I'm going to do that. So then the back. Now the back is where we get to use our clean out the closet stuff. And what I'm gonna do on that is, I have this blouse and I actually think I can get multiple journals out of this, but for right now, I'm gonna take this and kind of eyeball it and cut out a big piece so I can work with it. There we go. Let me see. 
this is about here and I'm making it bigger you know obviously and trying preserving some for other stuff anyway so then I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna go larger than I need it Hang on just a second and get my fabric scissors because those are not cutting well. And we'll go like that. Here we go. Put that all the way up there. And I'm going to be using a lot of other laces and trims and stuff, so I'm not too worried about perfection. All right, so we've done that. And I did it to where... <clears throat> turn that over. I wonder if there's a top side to that. I kind of think that's it. Okay, so... I'm going to put this on here and glue it down and turn that over. And I'm actually going to use this trim part right here for part of the bottom. So I want it to hit probably about there. So we're going to do that. I think the way I'll do it is I'm just going to lay it down. Boy, these sleeves keep getting in my way. Not a good outfit to wear today. Get a drink of water here. I'm just going to lay it down. Get it as straight as I can. And then I'm just going to take my glue and kind of go a section at a time. Pull it back. And like I said, always make sure you get to the end as much as you can. And you do have some time with this. And normally I would probably um, use tacky glue on this and let it dry. But because whenever I'm using doing a lot with material and stuff, I always usually use the tacky glue just because it's less expensive. And I don't mind letting it dry because usually when I'm doing these covers, I'll do like three of them, four of them at a time, let them dry overnight. And then, you know, I sew them too. So then that makes sure that they're dry. Okay, so we're going to use our tool again. Make sure we get it right to the ends. That's the most important thing. And if you don't, you can always tack it down later, but... And there we go. So we're going to do that. So then, I'm going to take that. I'm going to make sure I get it right enough on the bottom. I think that's good. And I know this is hanging over, but that's how, kind of how I want it. Okay. Kind of go like that. It's going to get on your hands. Spread it out. It all stuck on there good. You know. I have this tool too. This works this works really good on um on, on large areas and also I saw someone that used the um tool like this used for painting that cost a whole lot less money like a dollar and they used it um, to do the exact same thing and I thought well all that was smart so that's something to think about okay and I kind of came up short here but I think we have enough we'll make it we're gonna make it work and then we're gonna go all the way across here
I put dots on the other one. It, either way is going to work because you're going to spread it out. You just want to make sure you have enough glue everywhere. You know, I don't know. So then, again, make sure you get the ends good. Go all the way to the end. I always do that and make sure it gets all the way to the end. Spread it out. Okay, so then we're going to try and get that as straight as possible. Go across there, then there. Oops, try and get it on there straight. Kind of pat it down, get the ends on there good. Yeah, and there we go. And that'll dry pretty quick. So that's going to be, yeah, that looks pretty reasonably straight, I think. So, yeah, that looks pretty good. Take that, and you may want to do that with your whatever tool you're using. That way it'll help adhere. Make sure you get the ends real good. Okay. Now, you can cut around it. And let me try and get that in frame. And I don't, you know, you want to get as close as possible, but don't worry about perfection. I am going to put laces and things on top and, you know, you're not going to see every little, you know, imperfection. And like I said, that's probably the reason I love junk journaling because, I don't know, I feel like there's a lot of freedom involved in it and artistry and that type of thing and you know nobody's going to say that you did it wrong because I don't think there's really a pattern on how you should do it and I hope it never evolves into that so okay now see like I cut that a little too close but that's going to be okay because it's going to be covered up later so anyway so here we go move that over a tiny bit if I can cover up my boo-boo but anyway that is going to be our cover and I'm going to be adding some more to it and I'm going to do some of it now I have all these little doilies not everyone's going to have that I bought these off of eBay I think I bought um, I'm gonna I'm trying to guess here I think I bought about 20 of them for it was like ten dollars and then shipping was like five dollars so you know fifteen dollars and it i got quite a few and they're all vintage and wonderful and great and you know it was quite the find but if you go on there pretty much any day of the week you can find good deals on there to get stuff like that and also go to estate sales things like that although I do think that they're um, starting to come on to us and they're starting to charge more so I don't know I think I like this smaller one here because I want the rest of the lace so I'm going to put this on this is going to be on my cover and I am going to sew all the way around this so the next time you see it it will be like that but you do not have to do that no reason for you to have to sew and I just take this and put it all the way around well, I think my husband's just come home and my dogs are all excited okay so anyway I'm gonna put this on there and it's gonna go right here and I like it to overlap a little bit and see that's that little booby that we had and I told you don't worry about it because we're gonna probably cover it up 
and I probably will put something on the back. I'm just not sure yet if that would be. Yeah, I think that might look good. I might do that. I'm going to do that. Okay. So then I'm going to put that on. Try to keep that in frame if I can. Oh. See, this is why you don't want to use this. It You can go through it really quick. And I usually, like I said, I would be using just plain old tacky glue that I bought from the dollar store. And part of the reason, I, I like these little bottles. They're easier to handle. You don't have a bunch of glue sitting on the bottom in a big bottle that you're trying to get out. So I buy stuff from there, buy theirs all the time. Anyway, so that's going to be the other side. Hey, all right, should I overlap that a little? No, I like it sticking out, I think. All right, then in the back, I have a smaller piece. I don't know if I should put that on there or put a bigger one. I think I'm going to put the bigger one. All right, let's put the bigger one on there. Put, this, is, this is what we had put on the inside. I think I'm going to do that here. I don't know. Oh, I probably should have put that. I don't know. Well, I'll put something else under there. I wonder if I should go down there. Yeah, I don't know. I do not know. Ooh, 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 ooh. See, this isn't dry yet. I think what I'm going to do... I think I have an idea. I'm going to put this... i got to pull that off of there. See, that's another thing with tacky glue, too. You can you just have a lot more room for, you know, changing your mind. I think I'm going to put that up there. I think I like that better. And I'll move that up a tiny bit. I'll probably put some lace or something down there. And then that way it'll look more finished. But or maybe I won't put this here. You know what? I'm covering up almost all of my material. Let me see. After I put all this glue down, let me think. I don't know. Yeah, I am kind of covering up everything, aren't I? Oh, oh. I don't know what to do. Okay, I think I'm going to take that off and I'll decide later. Kind of rub all that in there. Get that in there. Get some of it off. Get my weight. Yeah, this is fluid, people. I don't ever really do this ahead of time usually so anyway I'm gonna leave it that way and then the next time this is all gonna be sewn in I'll, I'll sew all the way around it I'll sew this and I may add a few things here and there but you get the gist of it that's what we're gonna do and I think that that's all we're going to do for this time. So next time we'll have this sewn in and then we're going to go ahead and start working on our papers and that type of thing. Anyway, thank you.